name is Tiffany and this is my channel Who's Your Handmade. Today I have a pattern review for you. My very first pattern review here on my channel and it is about the staycation dress from Ellie and Mac. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. So as I mentioned, this is the first pattern review that I've done here on my channel. So just to give you a little outline of how I would like these reviews to go, I am going to give you some information on this pattern, some changes, alterations that I made, and then I would like to input some pictures throughout this whole video of how this dress actually looks on me, all three versions, and then maybe at the end I will give you some more information on Ellie and Mac, the company themselves. They are an amazing company and maybe I'll just give you some, a few reasons why I love their company. All right, so let's jump right in. So I am talking about the Ellie and Max staycation dress today, and this is described as a tiered dress and peplum. So it has a peplum option, the peplum top option that has a ruffled flounce around your midsection. I have not made that version. I've only made the dress. In my opinion, I just don't look that great in a peplum shirt, so I, I have kind of stayed away from that option, but the dress is lovely. So um, this dress comes in sizes extra, extra small to 6XL, and forgive me if I look down, I've got all my notes right in front of me and I don't want to get anything wrong for you guys. <laughs> so um, yes, it comes in extra, extra small to 6XL, and I have made a size 2XL based on my bust and waist measurements. My bust and waist measurements fell exactly into the parameters of the 2XL and it fits very, very well, in my opinion. <laughs> I think it fits really, really good. It's very comfortable um, and I didn't do that many alterations, but I'll go through the alterations that I did make um, later in the video. You have three length options, the peplum that I mentioned before, and then an above the knee version, they have drafted this pattern for a 5'5", five five, um, on a 5'5 five five model. So whatever, they, they give you instructions on if you're taller than 5'5", five five or if you're shorter than 5'5", five five, what to do with your length. But that's the above the knee option. And then you have a maxi length option. And I have made kind of variations of those, of the maxi and the knee version with my own alterations and I'll show you and explain. You also have two neckline options. You have a crew neckline, which I have done. This is this is my second version of my staycation and I have done the crew neck on all of them. The scoop neck, I don't know how how far it scoops down because I haven't made it, but I would assume that it's not, not too um, immodest and I might make that version in the future. <laughs> because I need more of these dresses, you know? <laughs> and then you have three sleeve options. You have a short sleeve, a three quarter length sleeve, and you have a long sleeve. So this dress, while I call it the dress of summer and all of my versions are fairly summery, you can move this into fall and you can move this into winter based upon how you put together length and your sleeve options. You guys, this dress is really a dress of all seasons in my opinion. Okay, moving on to the instructions. If you have made an Ellie and Mac pattern, you know how amazing their instructions are. But if you have not made any Ellie and Mac patterns, or if you have not made any indie patterns at all, if you are, uh, you know, very loyal to the big four, the pattern instructions that come with most independent companies will shock you at how detailed they are. Step by step, uh, full color pictures showing you exactly what to do in that step. And then a lot of the times they'll have little links. Um, for, exa for example, uh, do you know how to gather? And it will, it will say that in a little blurb. And if you need help learning the technique of gathering, it'll take you to a video, which is just, I think that is just a step beyond. Amazing. No big four pattern is going to do that for you. It's just going to tell you to gather. And as a, as a, I guess, an advanced beginner, I'm still learning. I'm still learning a lot of techniques now I know how to gather. But this pattern shows you how to gather using clear elastic. And that is the big thing that stuck out to me with this pattern, the instructions. Excellent, excellent instructions on how to gather using clear elastic. And that was so much fun. 
<laughs> so easy once you get the hang of it. Now, let me give you a little disclaimer. The tutorial for gathering, I, I did not use the one that was in these instructions. I went to YouTube and Ellie and Mac have um, tutorials on their website for almost every pattern that they do. They have a sew along with Diana and Diana in the staycation sew along shows you how to use clear elastic. Now Diana also has a couple more videos out there on YouTube that show you how to use clear elastic for gathering but they are, in my opinion, not near as good as what she's done in the staycation tutorial. So I would go to YouTube and look up the staycation tutorial for how to use clear elastic. And I have actually done that all three times just to make sure that I'm doing that technique correctly. So that is an amazing part of this pattern. Now, why do they, why do they tell you to use clear elastic? So the fabric that is being used in this dress is knit and it has to be, um, I didn't look that up, but it's, I think it has to be like 50% knit a stretch. So it needs to be stretchy. So as you add on your tears to this gown, to this dress, your, your fabric could, some fabrics do like double brush poly tends to droop with the weight of each tier. And so to prevent that drooping, they have used this clear elastic method. Now that it's kind of a double-edged sword. I used the Dritz clear elastic that I just bought from Joann's. I'll pop a picture up because I don't have any here with me within reach. <laughs> so I used that clear elastic very, I mean, it was fine to use, fine to, um, put it on with my sewing machine, no big deal. However, you can feel that in your dress, you know, forever more now because, because they're asking you to leave it in there to help with structure, you can feel it. So I feel it the most in my longer version, the longest version that I've made for some reason, when I sit down, um, or even, you know, when you're standing, but mostly, it's mostly annoying when you're sitting down, you can feel the elastic part there in the gathers. It's not a deal breaker for me. Obviously, I've made three versions of this using clear elastic for all of them. So it's not that big of a deal. I, I did see somewhere where someone said that they took the clear elastic out. But to me, that is defeating the purpose of keeping that structure in your seam lines so that your fabric doesn't start to droop on you. So it's fine. I just want to make sure that you guys know there's there's kind of a double edged sword of that clear elastic. Great technique for gathering, but it is kind of annoying when you leave it in there. All right. Otherwise, the instructions are completely awesome. Just use the sew along from Diana on YouTube to get the best technique for using that clear elastic. Likes, likes, dislikes, I like everything about this dress, barring that clear elastic. I mean, and it's not, it's kind of like a mild annoyance. It's not like it's a real dislike. So I love everything about this pattern. <laughs> All right, what fabric did I use? The fun part. So for my first version, and I hope I'm popping pictures, up throughout this video of, of all my versions. The first version that I made was a double brush poly that I bought in a roll from Walmart. It was four yards for eight dollars or some three yards for eight dollars, probably three. And um, great deal. So I picked it up. It was really pretty. It's in that really pretty green color. And I made my staycation dress out of that one. My first version of my staycation dress, I was going for a midi length, kind of a midi, yeah, more of a midi length. And it kind of fell somewhere between a midi and a maxi on that one, which is totally fine for, for me. I love that. I love that length. It does look a little more dressy, so I tend to wear that one to um, work a lot or if I need, you know, a little nicer occasion. And then the second dress that I made, my second version, I is this one. This is a rib knit from Hobby Lobby. It was in their, um, I think it was in their spring collection this year, actually, and I picked that up from Hobby Lobby. Very comfortable. It's kind of a wider 
a wider rib knit than um, a traditional smaller rib knit. And then my third version, I also used a rib knit from Hobby Lobby. They're almost they're almost identical, really. The um, the difference is just the fabric design. So those two. Um, I really loved them. So I use three yards every time. I, I bought three yards of this, I bought three yards of the pink version, and I also had three yards from Walmart. And that was more than enough. Um, and actually I'm going to show you the mommy and me version that I made with for Addie and I out of this fabric and I have enough fabric left over from the other two that I could make her another dress as well. You, plenty of fabric. Three yards was plenty for me. So what pattern alterations did I make? Now, I'm going to pause and show you some pattern pieces. I thought it might be a good idea to actually show off what the Ellie and Mac pattern pieces look like. And they, they come layered and I print from my iPad, so I have to print all, all of the sizes, but that's fine. I print them all, I tape them together, and then I keep this and I trace off the size that I need. So this is the bodice. And with a lot of Ellie and Mac patterns, you will notice that they give you the back neckline and the front neckline on the same pattern piece. And what you do when you trace it off, I cut up to the shoulder and then I hinge this back and then I can do my front, my front bodice and then I can pull it back on and do my back bodice. That was kind of confusing when I first started doing Ellie and Mac patterns, but it really saves you from having to make a whole nother bodice piece. So that is the bodice, and I made no changes to the bodice. You also have, you have the two neckband options. These are what your neckbands look like. I've highlighted my size because I have traced them off. Now this, this is the top tier of your dress. Pretty, pretty big, actually, pattern piece. This is every size that it comes in, though. Um, and it has, over here on the edge, a little dip, which is kind of neat. A little tailoring in there for you. And what you do on here is you decide if you want... Kind of awkward sorry guys so you decide if you want to make the above the knee version or if you want to make the maxi version if you're going above the knee you will cut here this darker line and if you are making your maxi version you will use uh, the full length of this pattern piece so for my first version my double brush poly version i used this in its entirety this was my first top tier and then the bottom ruffle, I have not changed on any of these pattern pieces. I will show you what I have changed for version two and three. So for version two, I used the above the knee um, option on that bodice down there and then the regular bottom tier. And that ended up being the green um, my green rib knit that I'm wearing right now. And it is really for my taste, slightly too small. So not, a, I mean, not, a, I mean, not small, short, uh, not a big deal, not, not a deal breaker. I still love this dress and I wear it all the time, but it's really, I would be a little more comfortable with a little more length. And that's what I have done for my third version. <laughs> so I'm kind of like Goldilocks, like trying out what is the best fit for me. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process, I got three dresses that I love. So for the third version, I'm going to show you. This is my traced off piece. I have lengthened the above the knee tier from my original pattern piece by three inches. And you can see that I added it in there. So I lengthened this one by three inches. So that is my top tier. And then like I said, sorry for the wrestling. Like I said, I use the bottom tier just normal. It's I, I made no changes to that bottom ruffle. And that gave me my Goldilocks dress. It is the perfect length. I feel comfortable. I don't feel like 
my knees are you know on display which I kind of like to have my knees covered it's just a personal preference um and that that pink dress is the Goldilocks version <laughs> for sure now what did I do for the sleeves I did change my sleeves on all three versions and what I did was I took the original sleeve I took the original short sleeve that they give you the pattern piece and I hacked it into a flutter sleeve and um you just do that by slashing you slash your original pattern piece and you just spread it you slash it and you spread it and this there's a great tutorial on youtube from diana actually and she shows you how to make that flutter sleeve and it has given me the I mean, it's not a really huge exaggerated flutter sleeve, but it is plenty of movement, plenty of um, flow for what I wanted out of the sleeves on my dresses. Now, I do have a wider bicep, and I always have to have I always have to be careful with all patterns and measure the um, bicep, take the bicep measurement because usually I always need um, a little bit bigger. But the flutter sleeve, you don't have to worry about that. It's super pretty and plenty of room for movement and it just turned out great. So that was the only pattern, uh, the only pattern alterations that I made. And then for my kind of special feature for this dress, I made a mommy and me version for Addie. I made the Little Lizard King Parker for her out of the same fabric. Hopefully I'm popping a picture in and she looks just darling. Now it's not an Ellie and Mac pattern and it does not exactly match, but it's a little tiered dress and we're matching. So it is so darling, so cute. It turned out really, really well. Um, I will tell you if you want to get attention <laughs> from anybody out in public, just wear a mommy and me outfit. <laughs> I have never in all the things that I've made got any more any comments really in comparison to what I get when I go out in public with this dress on and Addie in her little dress. <laughs> we went to Walmart this morning and yeah it was everyone was stopping us telling us how cute they looked and they do look so cute and her little dresses are so easy to make they're addicting so I foresee more mommy and me outfits in the future. <laughs> All right, now for a little information on Ellie and Mac, uh, the company themselves. I have mentioned before that Ellie and Mac patterns are just easy wearing, easy to make everyday garments that um, I just love. They fit my lifestyle really well. They are mostly knit patterns, comfortable, and they're easy to sew up, um, especially with your with your serger if you have a serger. It's a great tool for a lot of Ellie and Mac patterns because they can be sewn up so quickly. Now, another great thing about Ellie and Mac is the cost of Ellie and Mac patterns. If you were to go to um, Ellie and Mac right now and look up the staycation dress, the regular price for that dress is only $5.95. I cannot tell you how amazing that pricing is. Most pattern companies are much more expensive to that to the effect of in up into $20 a pattern and Ellie and Mac gives you so many options with most of their pattern like this dress you could make this dress five different ways and you wouldn't even really know it's the same dress it's just an amazing amazing deal for your money also they do weekly sales you guys every week they will put five or six patterns and these are their legit patterns these are not like dumbed down versions these are their full version patterns on sale for two dollars <laughs> two dollars i'm telling you excellent excellent prices so sign up for their emails even if you you know if you don't don't want to give them a shot right now if 5.95 is not in your price range wait for a two dollar sale and look at them go in there and look at them every week and just see if there's something that you would like i have bought patterns obviously from ellie mac at full price but those two dollar sales are how i have built such a massive library of ellie and mac patterns i think i have close to 40 
close to 40 Ellie and Mac patterns and I have built that library by monitoring those two dollar sales it's just it's an amazing deal go check it out so um also they have great patterns for all kinds of range they have men's patterns they have children's patterns and they also have women's patterns so it's not just a women's only company they have a lot of options they have a lot of uh, great free patterns and I have made uh, at least two of those free patterns the tote to go is an excellent tote pattern I'm gonna post a picture in here if I have one of those it turn I've made three no I've made four <laughs> <laughs> great pattern very fun and they also have that grow with me pajamas that are free um that I've made and they also have a an adult pajama pattern that is free just bottom line go check out their patterns so amazing if you are a beginning pat if you're a beginning sewist and you're looking for a pattern to begin with I highly suggest Ellie and Mac and if, if you don't really care for Ellie and Max designs, go find another independent pattern company. Put down <laughs> the big four $1.99 uh, pattern that you have picked up at Joann's. Put that down and go find you a Ellie and Mac pattern or something equivalent. They are, their instructions are so much better for beginners and you will, trust me. <laughs> Just trust me. <laughs> if I would have done that at the beginning of my sewing, I would have uh, saved myself a lot of headache. But anyway, Alien Mac is a great company and you will not regret going and checking out their website. Okay, that's that's going to do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this pattern review. Like, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below. Have you made this vacation? Or what is your favorite Ellie and Mac pattern? I'd love to give it a try. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.